Page 3. Exercise C. Photo Story. Read and listen to two people meeting in a hotel lobby. You look familiar. Haven't we met somewhere before? I don't think so. I'm not from around here. I know. Aren't you from Japan? I'm sure we met at the IT conference last week. Of course. You're from Mexico, right? That's right. I'm sorry. I've forgotten your name. Kamura Takashi. But you can call me Taka. Hi, Taka. Leon Prieto. Please call me Leon. So, what have you been up to since the conference? Not much. Actually, I'm on my way to the airport now. I'm flying back home. Hey, we should keep in touch. Here's my card. The conference is in Acapulco next year, and I can show you around. That would be great. I hear Acapulco is beautiful. It was nice to see you again, Taka. You too. Page 5. Conversation Model. Exercise A. Read and listen to people getting reacquainted. Audrey, have you met Hannah? No, I haven't. Hannah, I'd like you to meet Audrey. Hi, Audrey. You look familiar. Have we met before? I don't think so. I know. Last month, you were at my sister Nicole's party. Oh, that's right. How have you been? Page 5. Pronunciation. Sound reduction in the present perfect. Exercise A. Listen to how the sound t of the negative contraction disappears in natural speech. 1. I haven't been to that class. 2. He hasn't met his new teacher. 3. They haven't taken the test. 4. She hasn't heard the news. Now listen again and repeat. Page 6. Conversation Model. Read and listen to someone greeting a visitor. Welcome to Beijing. Have you ever been here before? No, it's my first time. But yesterday, I went to the Forbidden Palace. It was fantastic. That's great. Have you tried Beijing Duck yet? Beijing Duck? No, I haven't. What's that? It's a famous Chinese dish. I think you'll like it. Page 6. Vocabulary. Tourist activities around the world. Exercise A. Read and listen. Climb Mount Fuji. Go sightseeing in New York. Go to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Try Korean food. Take a tour of the Tower of London. Take pictures of the Great Wall. Now listen again and repeat. Page 7. Exercise B. Listen to activate grammar. Listen and complete the questions using the vocabulary. Conversation 1. Welcome to India. Is this your first time here? Yes, it is. Really? Have you been to Agra yet? Oh, that's where the Taj Mahal is, right? No, I haven't. You should definitely take a tour. It's amazing. Actually, I'm going there on Friday. I will. Conversation 2. This is my second time in Japan. Well, welcome to Kyoto. Where else have you been? So far, I've been to Tokyo and Osaka. Tomorrow, I'm going sightseeing here. Kyoto is fantastic. You're going to enjoy it. Conversation 3. This is my first time in Peru. I've heard the food is great here. Yes, it is. We're really proud of our food. Have you tried ceviche? No, I haven't. Is it good? Excellent. Conversation 4. Welcome to Mexico City. Is it your first time? Yes. When did you arrive? Last week. I've done so much, but for me the best was climbing the Pyramid of the Sun. When did you do that? Yesterday. It was incredible. Conversation 5. Welcome to Rio de Janeiro. Have you been here before? 
Well, I've been to Sao Paulo before, but this is my first time to Rio. Really? Have you seen Sugar Loaf yet? No, I haven't, but I plan to. Oh, you should. It's amazing. Take lots of pictures. Now listen again and complete the short answers. Page 8. Before you read. Vocabulary. The hand. 1. Thumb. 2. Index finger. 3. Middle finger. 4. Ring finger. 5. Pinky. 6. Palm. 7. Fist. Now listen again and repeat. Page 8. Reading. We talked to June Galloway about her book, Get Off on the Right Foot. Don't let the wrong gesture ruin your day. English is the world's international language. But in your book, you focused on nonverbal communication. Why is that so important? Well, gestures and other body language can have different meanings in different places. Something that you think is friendly or polite could come across as very rude in another culture. I've described many of these customs and cultural differences so my readers don't get off on the wrong foot when they meet people from places where the culture differs from their own. Can greeting someone in the wrong way really lead to misunderstanding? In some cases, yes. The firm handshake a North American expects may seem quite aggressive in other places. And a light handshake, which is normal in some countries, may seem unfriendly to a North American. In what ways can hand gestures lead to misunderstanding? Well, as an example, we assume all people indicate the numbers 1 to 10 with their fingers the same way. But in fact, they don't. While North Americans usually use an index finger for one, most Europeans use a thumb. North Americans extend all ten fingers for ten. However, Chinese indicate the numbers one to ten all on one hand. For example, an extended thumb and pinky means six, and a fist means ten. Imagine how confusing this can be when you're trying to communicate quantities and prices with your hands. What other gestures can cause confusion? Take the gesture for come here, for example. In North America, people gesture with the palm up. Well, in Southern Europe, that gesture means goodbye. And in many Asian countries, the palm up gesture is considered rude. Instead, people there gesture with the palm down. I've heard that, in Japan, pointing with the index finger is not polite. Is that right? Yes. Japanese prefer to point with the palm open and facing up. Surely there must be some gestures used everywhere, right? What about the thumbs-up sign for great? Sorry, that's extremely rude in Australia and the Middle East. This is why it's so important to be aware of these cultural differences. Page 10. Before you listen. Exercise A. Vocabulary. Participial adjectives. Read and listen. The safari was fascinating. They were fascinated. The ski trip was thrilling. They were thrilled. The skydive was frightening. They were frightened. The food was disgusting. They were disgusted. Now listen again. Page 10. Page 11. Listening comprehension. Exercise A. Listen to classify. Listen to the three interviews and write the number of the speaker described by each statement. Exercise B. Listen for details. Answer the questions in complete sentences. Interview 1. This is Nick Krakauer, and you're listening to World Reflections. We're talking today with Nancy Sullivan from Minneapolis in the United States. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nick. So, Nancy, I understand you're a real traveler that you've visited over 25 countries around the world. That's right. Tell us some of the places you've been to. Well, I've been to countries all over, North and South America, Europe, Asia. What have been the most fascinating places for you to visit? 
Hmm, well, I like visiting countries where the culture is really different from my own. That's what I find most interesting. Different body language, different foods, you know. You told me earlier you've been to India. What was that like? Oh, India is fantastic. And what was so different about it? Well, for one thing, when people say yes, they shake their heads from side to side instead of up and down like I do. Interview 2 Nick Krakauer here, hosting World Reflections. Today's guest is Andrew Barlow from Perth, Australia. G'day, mate. G'day to you. So, Andrew, I understand you've been a teacher overseas. Is that correct? I have been, yes. And I understand you have an interesting story about something you ate once in one of those countries. That's right. Tell us about it. Well, this happened when I got my first teaching job in a very small village. The people in the village wanted to thank me for coming. So they prepared a meal with a lot of really delicious dishes. That must have been nice. It was, but there was one thing that I thought was kind of, well, disgusting. They had these tiny little fish that were still alive. They were moving on the plate. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to put one in your mouth and swallow it whole. Oh, boy! Look, I was their guest. I didn't want to be impolite, so I tried one. But I could feel it moving as it went down into my stomach. I tried a few to be nice, but I just didn't know how to say thanks but no thanks without being rude. Interview 3 We're back on World Reflections. My next guest is Mieko Nakamura from Sendai, Japan. Welcome, Mieko. Hi, Nick. Mieko, I've been told that you've traveled a lot and you've done some unusual things. I have. That you especially like to do, well... Things that would be kind of frightening for most people. I guess that's true, but not scary to me, just very exciting. So, tell us about what you've done. Well, for one thing, I've gone swimming with sharks. Twice. What? Swimming with sharks. For real? And you didn't find that scary? Well, I didn't do it alone. I was with a group. But swimming so close to the sharks was really thrilling. And what else? Last year, I climbed Mount Everest. The world's highest mountain? Yes. I'll bet it was really cold. It was, but I was really thrilled to be standing on the top of the world. Page 12. Review. Exercise A. Listen to the conversation with a tourist in Vancouver and check yes or no and write the answers to the questions using yet or already. Welcome to Vancouver. When did you get here? Just yesterday, thanks. Oh, that's great. Have you done any sightseeing yet? Yes, I have. I've already been to the Vancouver Aquarium. I love the aquarium. And I took a tour of Gastown. Cool. Have you been to the top of Grouse Mountain yet? Not yet. Is it nice? Oh, yeah. The sky ride up is great. You shouldn't miss it. And you should definitely visit the Capilano Suspension Bridge. It's a great place to take pictures. Oh, that sounds great. You know, everyone tells me I should try dim sum while I'm here. Definitely. It's really delicious. And they bring the food right to your table, and you choose what you want. Sounds like fun. Oh, did I mention that I went to the top of the Harbor Center Tower this morning? No. Actually, I've never done that myself. You should. It's a beautiful view. Vancouver is a great city. Well, I hope you enjoy your stay. Thanks. Top Notch Pop Song Greetings and Small Talk To read the lyrics and sing along, turn to the end of this book.
Have you had a chance to do that? Have you spoken to your family on the telephone? Have you taken time for a chat? Bow down, shake hands, do whatever you do in your native land. I'll be happy to greet you in any about it yet If you haven't eaten dinner, are you in the mood for a meal you won't forget Bow down Shake hands Do whatever you do in your native land I'll be happy to greet you 